everyone, welcome back. Alright, so let's go ahead and get into lightening and darkening our characters to show who's speaking at any time in the scene. So normally in a visual novel, when a character is speaking, all of the characters who are not speaking, they might turn a little bit darker to show you, to really visualize who is actively talking. And you can also set this on all characters at any time to show that the narrator is talking or maybe someone is thinking or, or something. You, you know what to do with your own novel. I'm just here to show you how to do it. So let's go ahead and jump into the character class and make it where we can actually define a normal and a darkened color and start setting these priorities. So in our base character class, we've got this color field, and this is the color that's currently assigned to the character. Now we want to define two more colors, one for the highlighted color, you can call this the active color or something, and then one for an unhighlighted color, which would be the darkened or inactive color. So let's start with a highlighted color. So our public color, highlighted color, is going to equal um, some sort of color. Hon honestly, this can just be our regular color. We don't have to do anything to it because it should be at whatever the max or whatever the true color is that is applied to the character. That would be the highlighted color. Uh, and then our public color for the unhighlighted color this one's going to be different. So this one's going to have some kind of change to it. We're going to make this a new color and we're going to make sure that we have the color dot r for the red field the color dot g for the green field color dot b so you have rgb and then the color dot a for the alpha and we want to change this so that way it's just a little bit darker so let's come up to the top and define a constant that will show what sort of strength we have for the darkening amount uh, how strong we want that effect to be. So we can make this a private uh, constant or a float called the unhighlight ooh, called the unhighlighted darken strength. And we'll set this to something like 0. 65 so 65 percent the normal color and then for each one of these values except for alpha we don't want to change that we just want to change the colors not the visibility so we'll multiply the blue value by the unhighlighted darkened strength and we'll do the same thing for the other fields And now we want a way of knowing if our character is highlighted or not. So let's make ourselves a public um, boolean called highlighted. And we'll make it publicly retrievable, but then only the character itself can assign the value. And we'll set this to true by default because every character is going to spawn in on their max color by default. So now on top of this, we're going to change the highlighting and the darkening color, not by using the transition color, but by creating two different methods. One will be highlight and one will be unhighlight. So these would be two separate methods. And of course, that means we're going to want two separate ways of tracking it, which would be having ourselves the coroutines. So we'll, we'll actually just use one coroutine because it's basically the same action. We're just changing a color. We just want it associated to a different uh, coroutine type. So let's make ourselves another protected coroutine for CO. And we're going to call this uh, highlighting. So this will apply for both highlighting and unhighlighting. unhighlighting. And the way to know what we're doing is, of course, let's make another boolean. So public boolean, and we're going to call this one is highlighting. So is this character in the process of highlighting itself on screen to be um, more visible, more apparent than the other ones? So is highlighting. We know that we're highlighting this character, first of all, if highlighted is true, and CO highlighting is not equal to null. And we can do the same thing for unhighlighting. So is unhighlighting 
and we'll simply change this to not highlighted, and highlighting is active. So now we can keep track of exactly what our character is doing and what their state is. But that just means now that we need to come down and create some functions for us to actually highlight and unhighlight this character. So down at the very bottom, let's go ahead and do that with two coroutine return values. So a public um, coroutine, we'll call this one highlight. And the only thing we need in here is a speed. So float speed, we're just going to default to one that way. You don't have to provide one. And then let's go ahead and just duplicate that, but we'll call this one unhighlight. And so what we're going to do is in highlight, we're going to first check if we are all, if we're unhighlighting the character. If we're in the process of unhighlighting them when we're trying to highlight, then we need to stop that process um, and just continue on from there. But in the same sense, if we're highlighting this character, we don't want to do anything at all. So let's check for that one first. So if is highlighting, then let's simply return co highlighting. Otherwise, if is unhighlighting, then let's make sure that we call on our character manager, stop the coroutine that we'll be running on it, which is co highlighting. And if we've gotten this far, then let's go ahead and set our highlighted to equal true. So we are now highlighting this character. And co highlighting equals character manager dot start coroutine. And we need to start some sort of coroutine. Again, just like for color, we'll make this different for each different type. Because sprite character is going to be working with images to highlight the colors. And um, live 2D would be working with... Um, Images too, I believe, if I'm uh, remembering that right. And models would obviously be something different. They'd be working with materials. So let's do a public virtual i enumerator and call this uh, highlighting just like that. We'll use this for both highlighting and unhighlighting. So we'll take a Boolean for highlight and then a float for the speed multiplier. So we'll call highlighting in here. We'll set that to highlighted. And speed multiplier is going to be the speed that we're using. After we're done with that, return CO highlighting. And then we can just copy all of this, paste it into unhighlighted, and say if is unhighlighting, then just return. Otherwise, if is highlighting, if is highlighting, then stop the coroutine, highlighted equals false, and then start the coroutine and return the process. So inside of here, obviously we're not going to do that with a text character, so we'll log a message. So that way we can't do anything for a character where this is not applicable. So that means that we need to come into our character sprite and initiate the highlighting from there. So in our character sprite, all we need to do is override the coroutine that we made for highlighting. So let's go ahead and say public override, and then let's override highlighting and remove the base function there, so we don't need that. What we do want to do is we want to grab the color based off of our highlight value. So let's specify a target color, and we're going to evaluate our highlight color. And instead of color.white, if we are highlighting, then we want to use the highlighted color that we defined for the character. Otherwise, we want to use the unhighlighted color. And then simply what we're going to do is go through each character layer and then transition the color to this target color. So for each, I'll do the character sprite layer layer in layers. Then I'll just say layer dot transition color to our target color along with our speed multiplier. And then let's go ahead and yield return null, wait for that to take effect, and do the same thing that we did for the colors, which actually we can go ahead and copy this since that's just one line. I'll remove those brackets and just copy these lines here, paste that there. So while any of our layers are changing color, we're going to yield and then we'll just change CO highlighting to null. 
once it completes. And that would be all that we need. Uh, now that I'm in character sprite again, I do notice one issue that we left from the last video, and that is in set color here. So when we are setting the color, we're immediately applying it, but if we're already in the process of changing to a different color, we're just going to set the color and then continue moving towards the other color. So essentially set color will have no effect. It's going to be overridden if we're in the process of changing one. We need to make sure that we're stopping any color that's uh, or color transition that's running on the layer if we set the color. So that means we need to specify layer and maybe stop uh, transit or stop layer dot stop changing color, which is not a variable. But let's go ahead and make it a variable. So why do I keep saying variable? It's function. Okay, so we have changing color. So let's go ahead and make a public void called stop changing color. And inside of here is going to be real simple. If is changing color, or if we're not changing the color, then we don't want to do anything. Otherwise, we want to go ahead and say our character manager dot stop coroutine, the changing color coroutine, and then make sure that co changing color equals null. So we're just making sure that we stop it. So in our character sprite, whenever we set the color, we're first going to make sure that we stop any changing process that's currently running. That way, nothing overrides anything, and we immediately set a color, and that's what sticks. Okay, now back to the topic at hand. Highlighting looks like we're good. So let's go ahead and test that out in our testing script as well. Let me go ahead and remove these color assignments, and then I'm going to say yield return um, Raylene dot unhighlight and I don't need um, let's go back to the character real quick I can see that getting in the way later so let me change from highlighted color to protected on both of these um, that way when I go to the test character and I try to say Raylene dot Come on now. When I try to say Raylene dot unhighlight, now I'm not getting like four four different options here. It's much cleaner and neater. Okay, so we we unhighlight it, then yield return new wait for seconds one, and then yield return Raylene dot highlight. But before I highlight, I'm going to check out how it works with the actual color of the character and say Raylene dot transition color to the color dot red which should be a max value red color and then we'll go ahead and wait for another second and then highlight so she's going to start off in full color then we're going to unhighlight darken her then we're going to change her to red and that red should be unhighlighted so it should be a darker red and then we're going to highlight so it should restore her to a full red value and then how about I just go ahead and turn her back to uh, white? Let's try that. See how this looks. We darken. Then she goes red. Aha, so that did not work, if you'll notice. Because, yes, she did darken. So highlighting is working. But when we set the color it's not taking highlighting into effect. So let's go ahead and go back into our script and change that. So in our base character class, we're assigning the color, uh, which then gets sent to whatever character type we're running as. So we're overriding set color, and we're also overriding changing color. So it would make sense if we have a color that is universally accessible for these characters, uh, no matter what type the character is, be it sprite, live 2D, or what have you. Uh, so we want to define that inside of this um, this character class, but not something that has to be manually assigned in any of the functions that we override. So let's make one similar to how we did unhighlighted and highlighted here. Just something that we can retrieve that gets us the actual color that should be applied to the character. So this color here is essentially the color of the character 
just plain and simple, not taking in the highlighted status at all into account. But we're going to have one more color which does take the highlighted status into account, and that's the one that gets applied to the renderers of the character. So we'll make this protected color, so it's not accessible from outside. All we can see is the main color of the character, but this one's going to be called the display color. And that one is going to check for our highlight status. So highlighted, let's check and do the highlighted color if we're highlighted or the unhighlighted color if we're not. And that's essentially our target color that we made earlier. So let's jump into Sprite here and let's go ahead and get this target color as our display color. And then for set color, let's go ahead and change color to our display color. Actually, we want to do that after base because base actually assigns it to the uh, default field. So after it's assigned, then we go ahead and make the display color and apply that to all of the layers, which would take in highlighting into effect. And then let's go back into the character class and in transition color, let's just change the target color to the display color that we defined above. And now if we run this in Unity, we should see the colors all work together perfectly. So we darken, and then we change the color to red, but it's darkened. When we highlight, it goes to the normal red, and then we go back to the regular color. Okay, so we can see that highlighting is working for the character, and when we set or change colors, regardless of our highlight state, the colors are applied correctly. Which means I could then do something like this. Let's go ahead and, as a little test, let's get Raylene and Stella on the screen. And I'm going to remove all of this stuff. Okay, so with all that in place, we could technically do something like this now, where we have characters highlighting, depending on who is active, and what they're, we can have them say stuff. And with this running in Unity, Raylene highlights and Stella gets dark. Once I click, Stella should get brighter and Raylene should go dark, which indeed they do. So it's a good way of showing who is actively speaking on the screen. Everything's working pretty nicely. Now, optimally, this is not the best way to write this, obviously. This is going to be much better once we incorporate all of this into our dialog files, and then it'll be handled automatically. But for now, this shows the point and shows what we're able to do so far. So I think that's a good stopping point for this video. We've covered highlighting and unhighlighting. We can set colors. We can set expressions. So we can already do quite a bit with our sprite characters. But we're going to take it a step further. And in the next video, we're going to focus on flipping our characters to face from one direction to the other. So hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.